What if you could talk to someone from thousands of years ago? What could they tell you about the world and what it was like to navigate through it? Researchers in Siberia are asking similar questions. Unfortunately, the one with the answers is a tiny animal called a rotifer, and it's not saying much of anything. Sometimes, not even eons on ice can snuff out life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And a very special... And, and thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. Uh, I th- you know what? A very special thank you to Johanna for the creation of this <laughs> week's artwork. Uh, to check that out, you can uh, visit us on our home on the web at ldtaxonomy.com. And a... V- an extra super special thank you to our patrons, uh, to Jesse Raspolich, Carol Raspolich, uh, Richard Kaspar, and Lottie and Aubrey. Thank you so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on. And today we're talking about a Rip Van Winkle for the ages, but more on that later. Oh man, you chose this one specifically because it does what I long to do. Take Sleep. a nap for a long time. <laughs> yes, nap. <laughs> I say as we've uh, started recording at 10 o'clock at night. But yeah, we are talking about the Deloid Rotifer. I'm, there's a B at the beginning of that first word, Deloid. The yeah. Deloid. Um, it's not pronounced. <laughs> um, I would imagine it isn't. Because <laughs> it's impossible. It's not a b- <laughs> Deloid. Um, Abdomen. Yeah, but you have a vowel to to, to it's a run, you're, that to vowel you is like a running start. Yeah, you, <laughs> you, you you can't get over the hill if you're starting like halfway up the hill. You know, you're just gonna roll right back down to the beginning. Yeah, so it's a it's a rotifer. That should tell you everything you need to know about this animal. I think we can probably wrap it up here. Cut to print. Yeah, uh, they're also known as wheel animalcules. Animal molecules, remember? Uh, animal molecules, I, they're tiny animals. Oh, you mentioned that in the... What was that? Is that the um, the worm episode? I can't remember. We did another episode. very, very uh, tiny animal. Or was that plankton? Yeah, it was plankton. That we were um, covering. Oh, do- Dolly Holiday. D- Dolly Holiday. Dolly Holiday. Yeah. Uh, it's a Dolly Holiday with Mary. Yeah, yeah animolecules. Well, animalecules. There's an A there, but animolecules works really well. Um, right, right next to the animaniacs. <laughs> um, but uh, we're gonna call it here. Um, Rodifer's wives. Um, uh, the Iron Maiden, the Wonder Worm, and the Sleepy Slug. Okay. Would you like me to taxonomize this? Sure. It's in the kingdom you know, love, and are in. And of course, it's animalia. Uh, but barely. <laughs> no, it's a, it's it's an animal. It's in the phylum Rotifera. So a Rotifer is in its own phylum. Um, the class is Deloidae. Deloidae, another one. Uh, that starts with the B D. Um, the order is Deloida, again, starting with a B. Um, the family is Adenetidae. Uh, that sounds like my son. When I asked him if he's brushed his teeth, I did not today. <laughs> I did not today. The genus is Adeneta. And the species is Vaga, or Vega. Mm-hmm. Adenata Vaga. I think it's, or it's probably Vaga, like Saga. 
so since we're in the business of naming things, it's time for m my favorite part of the show. Nitty gritty nomenclature. Uh, this one was a tough one. It's hard to find uh, to break this up and, and figure out what these things meant because I kept putting in Adonetta into like, hey, can you please translate this for me? And it's like, uh, it is an, a genus of rotifers. <laughs> it's like, oh, thank you. I knew that. What does it mean? Um, but now I'm asking you that question. What does it mean? What does Adonetta Vaga mean? Does it mean A, outer serpent? B, frozen multitude? C, stationary mouth? Or D, old ocean? Stationary mouth? Outer serpent, frozen multitude, stationary mouth or old ocean i guess old ocean final answer that is correct i think it's the first one you've gotten correct in a while i've managed to stump you yeah for for maybe a few months now i thought this one would, would stump you because uh it's just a bunch of it's it's random words it seems yeah i, um, I, I knew means, it wasn't uh, frozen um We'll talk about it later. I knew that couldn't be possible because there's a million of these, and and the major fact is only like applicable to one. Um, that was just recently discovered, and actually, the major fact applies to something that is very very similar to the species we the binomial name that we have, but it is an unidentified species. So. Hmm. It might be that species, but it might not be. So I knew it couldn't be that. Um, and then stationary. Aren't all mouths stationary? I mean, my mouth moves all the time. That's why we made this show. <laughs> we made it because of that? Because I can't well, stop your mouth moves, we flapping my well gums. We might do a show. <laughs> Might as well anyway, record what comes out of your face. And uh, I know they like, ironically, they like fresh water. So, like, it's not even an ocean going creature. Yeah, but that that's uh, Vega comes from Old Norse, which means sea or uh, waves. And Adenetta means uh, age or aged. So old. Um, all right. Would you like to know what this thing looks like? Sure. So, if you, uh, were... Like if, you've, tomatoes. if you've lived, if you lived under a rock and don't know what a rotifer is, let me clue you in. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't, of course, I didn't know what a rotifer was until the instant I started researching this. Um, so, these are... These are basically plankton. I mean, they are not taxonomically anywhere close to plankton. But if just put plankton in your brain and you'll have a pretty good idea, a good, pretty good starting point for what this looks like. They have it's around 1,000 cells, which sounds like a lot of cells because if it was dollars, that would be a lot of dollars. <laughs> but... To put it in perspective, uh, humans have between 28 and 36 trillion cells. So a thousand suddenly doesn't seem like a whole lot. So these guys are very, very, very tiny. They are called multicellular organisms, um, even though that applies to a lot of organisms uh, because it's... a um, it, they just barely have more than more than a few cells. Um, it's like, oh, I got two million dollars. I am now a multi-millionaire, and all the other millionaires just pat you on the head and they're like, oh, that's so <laughs> cute. Um, so the the uh, rotifer you can only see with a a microscope, um, but when you do look at it through a microscope, it looks like a clear pregnant slug 
or like a ghost that in that's in his last seconds before Luigi slurps it up with his ghost sucker vacuum machine. We've been playing a lot of Luigi's Mansion and they kind of do this like weird stretchy thing as you, you know, uh, defeat a ghost. And uh, that's what it reminded me of. Ghost. <laughs> yeah. Uh, most uh, deloids are made up of three distinct regions. They have a head, uh, a trunk, and a foot. Um, but uh, rotifers in the genus um, Adenetta, they lack a foot. And instead, it kind of all tapers down to a tail. So they have a rounded head. Uh, the middle part, it looks kind of like this distended belly. Um, and then it kind of all tapers down to this, this medium-sized... Uh, tail at the end which is why I think they look like a ghost um, if specifically a ghost from either Luigi's Mansion or um, Harry in the Haunted House if you have ever read Harry in the Haunted House let us know <laughs> uh, send us an email because it's a very niche thing um, but yeah that's what it looks like it's a small clear um, pregnant booger Uh, but how small is it, Joe? That's a great question. Welcome to the, the to the beloved Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show, the part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show that's introduced by you when you send an audio yourself saying, singing, or chittering. The words Measure Up into LDTaxonomy at gmail.com. We don't have a new Measure Up intro this week. Poo. So we're going to hear from a single-celled organism. We're going to hear from Osmosis Jones. How did you know? Because I, it's the only single-celled organism that I've ever heard a voice come out of. <laughs> uh, without further ado, uh, listener's favorite part of the show. <laughs> Why you hit so hard? Why you hit so hard? I think that was from the trailer. I remember seeing. I remember there. Well, there was one movie I used to watch. I th maybe it was Space Jam or something like that. And there was always a there was a commercial for Osmosis Jones in it. And that I remember hearing that over and over again. Probably. Sometimes I forget that Chris Rock and David Hyde Pierce worked on a movie together. <laughs> and that's uh, true. And I guess Bill Murray, probably not at the same time, but. Yeah, they might not have ever met. I'm sure they've met at some point. But yeah, probably not. Maybe not even on that uh, On that project. But yeah. Which here, let's talk about length. They're between 150 and 700 micrometers. It's a little U with a teardrop and an M. Mm, okay. How many rotifers go into the weight, the, into the, into the weight? How many rotifers go into the height of a Rottweiler? Like from, from pads to withers? Yeah. I saw a Rottweiler for the first time in a while, uh, with, you know, in, enjoying the breeze out of somebody's uh, window in their car. I was like, oh, I haven't seen a Rottweiler in a while. They're, they're, they're fun fun dogs when you're not on their bad side did you, did you have um, a, a hint that you're going to interrupt me with <laughs> here's a hint a rottweiler is fully grown around the two year mark it is considered one of the oldest surviving dog breeds with roots that date back to the Romans and they are said to have accompanied the legion across the Alps so this is one of those dogs that they like attached a sickle to so that they could go and like disembowel horses. No, they were mostly for like driving and protecting herds. Something tells me that Rottweilers don't make great sheep dogs, but I, what do I know? That's what they still do today. Do they? Yeah. I'm going to say 36 inches, just a straight three feet. Um, one, uh, 1700. Final answer. Yep, one thousand seven hundred little bull, little little rotifers go into the 
height of a Rottweiler? The correct answer is 985 Rottifers. Uh, something must be off. Rottweilers are about 69 centimeters or 2.2 feet. Uh, what? A Rottweiler? Mm-hmm. The last Rottweiler I hung out with was named Dillinger. And my boss brought uh, brought him into work. And that was like... That was a big dog. Couldn't have been two feet tall. 2.2. 2. Uh, according to the FCI standards, Rottweiler stands between 61 and 69 centimeters. Or 24 and 27 inches. At the withers for males. Because then like a Rottweiler was like a, a, a above average sized dog. And then like... You know, like a Mastiff or a Great Dane or a St. Bernard. That's like a f- three and a half foot dog or th- four foot. And maybe that maybe that's way too much. <laughs> uh, let's talk about class size. Uh, there for, uh, there's about 450 described species in the that qualify as Deloid rotifers. So, how many Rotifer classes go into the total number of high school graduating classes in in the total number of high school graduates in 2020? In the United States? Yeah. In the United States. Here's a hint. There were 3 million high school graduates in the U.S. in 1980. Montana has the highest graduating graduation rates. I have no clue. Probably more than three million. I know you're anchoring me, but I just I can't help but use it as an anchor. <laughs> I want to say that more people are graduating high school. Not only are there more people, but there are, are more graduation. People are graduating more successfully more there there are higher graduation rates across the board i don't know that but i'd like to think it so i'm gonna say 10 million which accounts for a doubling of the size and some and quite a bit of change a tripling of it no that's too much seven 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 million, a doubling of the size, and then some change. All right, my answer is fifteen and a half thousand graduate cl- classes of Rotifers. Hmm. Final answer. Go into the uh, number of gra- people that have graduated high school, twenty twenty three. Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Is that a trick question because they delayed uh, high school graduations? They eventually got graduated. No, that's just the most like recent accurate data I could find. Actually, the, there was a chart. And 2020 was the second to last one. And the last one was 2024 to 2025 year. And there was a number for it. So these guys were soothsayers Depressing it. somehow. Um, but the answer is 8,000 oh, Rotifer classes. Man. There were 3.6 million students that graduated. I in was optimistic for no reason. So the anchor was like a, almost like a reverse psychology anchor where like it really was close to three. I said 3 million in 1980 and there was just a little bit of mustard on that. 3.6 today. Yeah, I, I mean, I there are a lot more people than there were in 1980. Not twice as many people, but that's why I was like, I'd like to think that graduation rates are higher because college degrees are higher than they were in the 80s. Do you have any All right, fast you want some fast facts before we get yeah. into the mate? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you took the words right out of my <laughs> mouth because we've said you them 302 mouth. times now. Um, that's not true. We didn't, we, we didn't start the major, the general info and major facts until 
a little ways down the line. But so the rotifers li in general live in freshwater habitats all over the world. Uh, they eat bacteria, algae, uh, and detritus. And they do this by creating tiny currents of water around their mouths by using these tiny hairs called uh, cilia, which you've heard us talk about before. They're sometimes used for motion. They're sometimes used for feeding. It's just little, little hairs. Um, and by moving them, they can create kind of a small suction um, current and bring water uh, containing the, their food, like bacteria and algae, into their mouths and stomachs, um, specifically into a grinding organ, like a, or not, not an organ grinder, a grinding organ um, called the mastax, um, which sounds like uh, allergy medication. <laughs> I was going to say it sounds like um, money you have to pay to the government if you're overweight. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious i mean if we ever went to a universal health care system then uh then there there probably would be an extra tax for for mass pu for putting more for taxing the tax system the health care system even more you're gonna be taxed mass tax yeah um that's pretty good that's better than my idea <laughs> so um rotifers are free swimming uh, but they can also slide uh, if they come into contact with a solid surface. Um, most rotifers would use the inchworm method uh, where they, you know, throw their their head forward and then gather up their tail and then or their foot and then head, foot. Um, but the rotifer that we're covering does not have a, a foot, so it mostly slides um, along surfaces when it encounters them. Um, the one of the many interesting things about the the uh, deloid rotifer is that there are no males, only females. Uh, which is why I call this ro rotifer's wives. Jo <laughs> Joseph is just having the the worst time. He can't run. There's nowhere to run. He runs from one rotifer's wife to another. She's just standing in the doorway. It's you can't flee from evil when it's all around you, can you? And your name is Joseph, so it's just it works perfectly. Mm -hmm. They so uh, since there are only females, rather than uh, usual sexual reproduction that animals do, um, they reproduce through parthenogenesis, which we have mentioned before, specifically um, with a, a gecko whose name I can't remember but it clones itself. There are almost exclusively female geckos of this type. Um, and uh, she reproduces by self germinating. So there's no, f there's no fertilization that actually happens. Basically just cloning, um, cloning themselves. Their germ cells. So a germ cells is either sperm or an egg. Um, the female's egg, uh, just begins to, um, uh, undergo meiosis, starts to, um, multiply and with the exact genetic code of the, of the host parent, I'm trying to remember which the, what the name of that, uh, oh, the morning gecko, that's what it's called. Um, yeah, so essentially cloning itself. One species, um, which is the species that we're talking about today, uh, Adenetta vega, and let me know if I'm stepping on any toes, I can actually repair its own DNA using a complicated process involving its cells. So it's... There's one thing for like an axolotl to repair its arm or its spine or something like that. It's another thing when you have when your DNA gets damaged. Um, it's very little you can do about that. But the this uh, rotifer is able to repair it. Um, it is it, it very quickly gets 
far outside of my ability to to understand it my uh uh just pedestrian <laughs> scientific knowledge um so here's a sentence that exists about it um and you can make of it what you will <clears throat> Germline DNA repair occurs in a specific period of oogenesis during which homologous chromosomes take on a meiotic-like juxtaposed configuration. So if that meant anything to you, um, do uh, you, know, you are already a researcher of the Rotifer. <laughs> if uh, I know some and, of those words, and maybe like two of them, the and juxtapose. Yeah. <laughs> um, configuration. I mean, I know oh, most of right. these words. It's just uh, just putting them all together. A bunch of big words in one sentence. It's just like you trying too hard. Um, so enjoy that sentence. Um, and that's all I got. You know, I'll 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 leave the rest to you for the major fact. Okie dokie, I'm calling this major fact Millennial Thaw. Tardigrades are known to be tough, tiny titans. In fact, I think that was our third episode. It was about tough, tiny mm -hmm. titans. Uh, they have been revived after being frozen for up to 30 years. But our friend the Rotifer beat that record by millennia. In 2021, researchers in the Arctic took a core sample that was dated to be around 24,000 years old with uh, they dated it with an accelerator mass spectrometer, which means that they electrocuted the ice and shot it past magnets until it gave in and told them its age. <laughs> they tortured it for, for its birthday. <laughs> I looked up like what, a, what that does, a spectrometer mass spectrometer. And it's so complicated, like shooting things at a percent of the speed of light and like particles and then counting the atoms when they hit the wall <laughs> uh, in this tube. And then that tells you the age of the thing somehow. It's basically carbon dating, but a method of carbon dating that is the most current, I guess. Okay. Uh, um, and, it, and apparently it like... Carbon dating, I don't know. Carbon dating is interesting because it's like... To say the least. If you read about carbon dating, they're like, it can detect the age of something up to 60,000 years. But we make claims with carbon dating that are way older than 60,000. So, whatever. It is a little weird. Uh, anyway, they thawed out rotifers. Uh, that were frozen in the ice for 24,000 years. Those rotifers uh, were in a state of cryptobiosis, which is close to, it basically as close to a stop to metabolism as you can get without dying. Um, but then they defrosted them and they were able to move around, eat, and even reproduce. Something that was frozen for 24,000 years. They were contemporaries of the humans that, fir that left the first footprints that we, could, we, ha we have today. I'm sure the, ones before the, the humans before those guys were also leaving footprints, but theirs were getting washed away by the... So theirs were, theirs were gross. Yeah, so we didn't save them. We didn't I almost those. called this... Captain Steve Rotifers, but it seemed like not did like it didn't work. Uh, it seemed too elementary, but now I'm seeing that it's even more appropriate. I just wish I could have come up with a better pun. <laughs> um, so freezing something helps to avoid decay, which is why you put your chicken in the freezer. But it presents another problem: ice crystals. Ice crystals are sharp, fractal-like crystal structures that form when something freezes. And you can see them form if you look up a, a video of a bubble freezing, which is fun to see. Um, but you can see these ice crystals forming, and they look sharp. 
Um, and these crystals tend to destroy cells and animal tissue, uh, which is why you can't thaw out people and dinosaurs that we find in, in the ice. The rotifers, however, avoid this damage uh, from the ice crystals somehow. Somehow Palpatine returned, and by the same method, these rotifers avoid being ripped apart by ice crystals. Cloning. Uh, the research Palpatine paper... works for the rotifers. Oh, okay, yeah. The research paper speculates that they must have some, quote, bio- biochemical mechanisms of organ and cell shielding necessary to survive low temperatures. Um, but now that you said the thing about like them being able to repair their DNA, I wonder if it has something to do with that, their regenerative ability. Um, so it was previously I mean, only have a thousand cells. So if, if, if some of them get damaged, I mean, that's a, that's a huge percentage of what they had. Yeah. But they're easier to keep track of. I have a lot of cells that I just can't, I can't even manage them. So they die fall off yeah they probably they probably named all their cells (laughs) so it was previously thought that extremely long-term cryptobiosis would be impossible for multi-celled organisms so your dreams of being demolition man were dim but new research into rotifers and certain nematodes that can be frozen for thirty-two thousand years should have done that one uh and there's been plants that have been thought out and continue to grow after thousands and thousands of years. Um, this research has revealed even complex organisms can be frozen and thawed. Researchers are even using these organisms to learn how we might be able to cryogenically preserve human cells, tissue, organs, um, stuff we might need to save for later on. And eventually... Uh entire Ellen Ripley's. Yeah. So we can go to and, the Andromeda galaxy. Yeah. And die in space. I'm not really sure what the plan is when we get there. Plant a little flag. But that's Try. all I got. That is that's a long time to be asleep. That... I, can you imagine like so just something that's like frozen for 32 or for 24,000 years? The th- if only it knew anything. <laughs> <laughs> Wakes up and now there's Reddit. <laughs> Probably pretty confusing. It's like when I went to sleep, there were 17 humans. And, and they were I walking around up, on the beach. When I woke up, there was <laughs> X.com. I'm, they, they, total, they missed Twitter entirely. It's now X. They missed a lot entirely. Um, Twitter is definitely one of them. <laughs> Although they came out in 2021, so was, I think Twitter was still Twitter. For a little oh, bit. yeah, Twitter. Twitter was still Twitter until, like, what, this year? All right. That's the Deloid Rotifer, a, a clump of a thousand cells that lives for tens of thousands of years. So, for you out there in podcasting, keep those cilia moving, sleep for 24,000 years, and work on the meiotic juxtaposed configuration of your homologous chromosomes like the Deloid Rotifer here in life, death, and taxonomy. Hey, Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging.
Life, Death, and Taxonomy is my favorite in the world podcast. <laughs> hey guys, what I miss? Literally everything. You missed so much. There's no dinosaurs.